this is the Provoke Prawn and this is the Rockat Vulcan TKL. This is a 10 keyless version of Rockat's Vulcan lineup and a recent addition to their keyboards. A fantastic looking device. And if you've seen my previous videos on the Rockat Vulcan 120 and 122, you'll notice some similarities between those and this. Obviously, this is in black. It's also worth noting that this is the standard TKL. There's also a pro version, and there are some differences between this and that. This is also the linear version. There are two types of switches available with the standard one that include linear and tactile. And then the pro version uses optical switches instead. So I'm going to focus on the standard version, which you can see here, which will set you back somewhere around $130 or £130 sterling. And as you can see from the intro clips, a very nice looking keyboard. Now I'm going to do a couple of separate videos on this, comparing it with other ones, and also to show off the keystrokes so you can hear what the sound of the keys are like separately without me talking but this is an unboxing video and review i've been using this keyboard for a few weeks now and thoroughly enjoying it and i'm going to talk to you about what it's like to use and why it's nice and the highlights of it one of which as you'll see is a detachable usb c to usb a cable there which is a nice addition to a reasonably affordable keyboard it's not terribly expensive and yet still has a nice premium feel to it now as well as being a 10 keyless keyboard this is also a low profile design which means it sits low on the desk and it also has thin keycaps and sort of raised housing which lets out a lot of the rgb lighting which i'll show off a bit more later on it also has that wonderful brushed aluminium backplate finish to it. it looks really good really nice design as well as a nice media control wheel at the top there give you that audio adjustment and some buttons buried within these keys on the home insert delete and page up page down buttons which you can use with function button to then adjust various things and obviously it's controllable within rockat's swarm software and i'll cover that at the end another thing that you might notice on the design of this keyboard is that the keycaps have a fingertip shape to them so the designs that your fingertips can sit comfortably on top they're not flat they're curved inward slightly allows your fingers to sit nicely in there it's very comfortable to use in that way one difference between the rocket vulcan tkl and the 122 that i looked at previously is you'll note there is no wrist rest included in here which is a shame on the one hand but on the other hand the wrist rest that included previously with the other keyboard was just a plastic one anyway so it didn't give you a great deal of comfort and support but this design the low profile design means it's, it's low on the desk so your wrist isn't at a weird angle and it's quite comfortable to use and because it's a TKL it gives you more space obviously for your mouse so if you have limited space to game on then a TKL is obviously a nice option as you can see from these clips this is a very nice looking keyboard with a nice premium feel to it in that design and the back plate and the overall lighting effects and things and it is really nice in there and you'll see multiple angles of that later on but one thing that I will note that I'm not going to show in the video unfortunately is that this thing picks up quite a lot of dust over use and i'm looking at it now and it has a lot of dust and dirt and hair on it and it seems to attract it quite easily obviously because of the raised keycap design though you can just use some compressed air to blow it out and get it clean nice and easy that's one benefit of this housing and the way it's designed here you can see the raised housing and the thin keycaps means that you can see in between all the keys and you can get in there nice and easily so it's easy to just run a cloth over it and give it a blow to clean it off also that raised design means that you see a lot more of that housing and it illuminates really nicely both during the day and at night this is one of the best rgb keyboards i've seen gives a lot of fantastic lighting i really like rock hats design it's quite simple their rgb lighting they don't have a great deal of different color schemes and things but this amo design that you're seeing here is the default is this intelligent organic rgb lighting they have that really just looks nice and the way they designed this similar to the vulcan 122 is that it just shines really nicely now, as I said earlier on, this uses Rockat's Titan switches. These are the linear ones. They are 1.4 millimeters of actuation, so quite a short distance. And then demonstrate that a bit later on, but essentially means that you just press 
the keys very gently and they actuate almost immediately. This has the downside that I've found a few times of if you just rest your fingers gently on the keys when you're not typing, sometimes they actually activate when you don't want them to and you find you're accidentally typing letters out when you didn't mean to necessarily. But when gaming, it means it activates really quickly. So these are the linear switches, as I said, 1.4 millimeters of actuation, 3.6 millimeters total travel distance. They say this is 30% quicker than standard key switches but yet gives you a crisp and responsive feel. Now the tactile version, which you can buy separately as a different option, has an actuation point of 1.8 millimeters, so a bit longer, and a 3.6 millimeter total travel distance, and that's meant to be a bit crisper and not quite as quick to actuate, but silent with a noticeable bump. So if you want a bit more response in your fingertips and feel it a bit more, then you can get it from that. And then there's obviously the Pro version, which uses optical switches, that are meant to last longer and give an even more accurate response. What I've found is that these are very nice. They are quite loud, as you'll hear a bit later on when I do a bit of typing on it, but still satisfying to type on. I've been using it to type and work during the day, gaming at night for quite some time now. Used it over the Christmas period and into the new year, and it's been very nice to use. And once again, the Vulcan lineup from Rocket is a fantastic bit of kit. Now you can see here on the right hand side you have the ability to adjust both the lighting brightness and the special effects in terms of the RGB lighting from the keyboard itself with just the function press and those keys. You also have that media volume control wheel at the top right. Fairly straightforward and simple affair but it's always nice to have a volume control wheel on the keyboard. I think that's a simple but nice addition. You also have the ability to play back, pause, stop and skip tracks and such in F9 to F12. And you just need to press the function key to do that. So obviously with a TKL keyboard, you lose dedicated media keys, but you have them buried in the other ones. And I think the way Rocket's done it with it, most of them on the right hand side makes it easy to access and not much of a faff. You can also press function and page down to go into game mode which disables your windows key so you don't accidentally activate that and you'll hear from the typing it has quite a clicky sound to it despite being linear and it's not obnoxious certainly not obnoxious but it's certainly not quiet either and i have found it satisfying but it can sometimes perhaps tickle the fingers some might find it a bit jarring is what i'm essentially trying to say with this in the design and the way it feels but these keycaps and the key switches are very comfortable and they will last you up to 50 million keystrokes. With the Rocket Vulcan TKL Pro, the optical switches can get up to 100 million keystrokes. So you pay a bit more and go for the optical version, you get key switches that will last longer and a bit more robust. And here's what I was talking about with the lighting and how you can adjust that on the fly. So you basically just press and hold the function key and then you can turn the brightness up and down and you can go between the different effects. If you stick with me to the end of the video, I will go into the Rockout Vulcan software and talk to you about the difference here. By the way, on the right hand side is the Rockout Burst Pro, which is their lightweight gaming mouse. And I've done a video on that separately if you want to check that out and get an idea of what that's like. And I've also compared it with some other lightweight mice and I'm going to be doing more comparisons in the near future with other ones if you're interested. So what you're seeing so far is a very comfortable, nice looking keyboard to use. That low profile design means that it's comfortable to use throughout the day because it sits nice and low on the desk. And so your hands aren't raised, your wrists aren't in an awkward position and it's comfortable. But the highlights for me are the premium look and feel to it. This sort of silver outer edge that you can see around there, the brushed back plate, the concave keycaps, so the thin and compact design and the excellent RGB lighting and the close-up view of that RGB lighting you'll see some of the organic nature of it so for example when you touch some of the keys you can see them reacting when you're typing they also change when you're not using it so the colors just wash through it but it reacts to your touch so if you touch in certain sections it's quite reactive but you don't have to program any of this either you don't have to layer it or set it up within the software obviously you can adjust the rgb lighting but this is the standard default setting and amo technology that rocket has that they've used 
quite a while and I've always enjoyed the look and feel of it. It has a very nice rich colour to it and the way it changes just feels natural and it looks good. The lighting looks great throughout the day and obviously you can adjust the brightness but it's bright enough to use in a bright room during the day and then at night as well and they just balance just perfectly and it looks the part really fantastic. And here we are within Rockout Swarm software. As you can see, you have multiple different options here, including general features, key assignment, key illumination. You can also choose from up to four different profiles with the ability to add extra ones if you need them. Now within the profile manager, you'll see you have the option to set it up so that you can launch specific profiles, automatically launch them depending on what game you use. So just to show you how that works, we'll set it up, we'll go into program files and we'll find the Steam files for Cyberpunk 2077. You can see that here. So we find the launch file for that and we'll tick to automatically switch profiles to this profile when we're using it. And that means that you can set it up for specific games or even apps so it launches a specific profile the way you've set it up with key assignments and everything else that you set within that software. The next step is you'll see that there are sound feedback options and you have the ability to change the sound response. So here's the click sound. Then typewriter sound. Then beam sound. And sci-fi sound. You can also set it to let you know when it's switched profiles and other things here. These are essentially a gimmick, but perhaps a nice little quirk of the keyboard that allows you to hear things. And if you've got a noise cancelling headset, perhaps you want to hear still that click of the keyboard, you can do it that way. Now, the real highlight to the Swarm software and to this keyboard comes within the key programmability. So if you look at any key or most of them, you'll see there's a secondary action, which is Rockat's easy shift functionality so you can see here with under rockets functions you have the easy shift button and the easy shift plus that is on the caps lock now what that essentially means is that when the game mode is activated you'll see at the bottom here it says game mode function and on the right hand side you'll see game mode under page down if you press the function key and page down that activates game mode and then when you press the caps lock button which is currently the easy shift button as standard, but you can assign it to other keys if you so wish. And that activates a secondary action for any key on the keyboard. So for example, we're gonna use the letter A here, and you can see as well as the default key press for A, you also have the easy shift functionality. Now you can do a variety of things with that here, but what we're going to do is we're going to record a new macro. So if you drag that over and drop it on, the secondary function you can then assign a macro you can set it to repeat a number of times you can set a delay between it and you can then basically set it up and record it with ease from within here so you can i'm just going to type out a quick sentence just to show you how that works so now as standard obviously you have the key press and you just press that a button it just responds as a but when game mode's activated if you press and hold the caps lock and then press the A button. It then does that secondary function, which in this case is a terribly spelt macro, which writes out, hello, this is the provoke prawn, or you can see I've made a typo in that, but that shows you an example of what you can do. Now this can be assigned with anything. You can put any macro in there, but you can also put any extra secondary function in. So you can basically assign that easy shift key to any button that you want, which is really cool because it gives you the power to do a variety of different things. You can assign any hot key and you see you have options here. You could set up a couple of key presses or you could set up a single key press for a different button. So here I'll assign one as that. So now when I press the caps lock button or easy shift button and A, it'll type out one. So you can obviously think of some different actions. This might be useful in game for setting up macros or for setting secondary key presses. If you want a quick action, you don't have to reach across the keyboard. Obviously, you can do a variety of other things as well. You can see you can set it to switch profiles. You can go into your main system settings. You can get it to do things like that. You can wake up from sleep. You can launch specific things. You could open a browser window. You can do other things like that. There's all sorts of potential uses for that. And this is really handy on a TKL keyboard 
where you've lost some of the keyboard. Obviously, you've lost this right hand side where your numpad would normally be. So now you can assign extra key presses to those buttons and make a secondary action and choose from a variety of different ones. And you can easily search and find the ones that might be most useful to you. Most of the keys on the keyboard will also allow you to assign an easy shift function and you can see which ones will work by just clicking on them and you can see at the bottom it says that there's a secondary function possibility down there but some of them won't. Backspace for example there's no option to assign a secondary one. If you click into list view you'll also see all the keys where they have two you can see the easy shift key functionality option there but some of them just plain won't let you do it but it's good to know which ones will. Now diving into the key illumination you can see as standard as I was saying the AMO intelligent lighting system you see a demonstration of what that looks like and then you have the other options to choose from. You can go for wave and you can see you can adjust the speed and things of it in here. And you have snake where the classic traditional snake zips across your keyboard. You can adjust the speed. Fully lit is standard as a theme, but you see you can choose from zones. So specific zones here you can select to light up in a certain color and change between those at your personal preference. So in this case, I'm going white, blue, red, yellow, and white. And you can change that and you also see that that applies to the other lighting settings as well. So you can either have it specific colors lighting up or you can go through a theme. So you have a variety of options for all of these heartbeat, breathing, ripple effects and other things. Plenty of different options there. Not quite as detailed and customizable as other RGB keyboards, but still very flexible and gives off some really nice lighting. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Be sure to check out the key actuation sounds if you're interested in hearing what the keyboard sounds like without me talking over the top. And I'd also like to take a moment to thank my special YouTube members, Meaty Keyboard, Raw, and Sir Spawns a lot, who all donate a small amount of money each month that's very much appreciated to help support the channel and in return get some benefits from doing so in the form of early access to videos and other things. If you're interested in finding out more, click that join button and help support the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Be sure to check out all the links and information you need in the description. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you and have a great life.